What's up YouTube family? This is Austin EV Only. Today we're installing a Hanshow Power Frunk on this Tesla Model X Plaid. Uh, right now it doesn't have the Power Frunk, it's just manual. Who has time for that? So it should be a nice upgrade. I've done this before on a Model Y, so it should be very similar. Let's get to it. My name's Kevin, I'm the owner of Austin EV Only. If you're new to the channel, we do repairs on all models of Tesla and the Chevy Volt, Fiat 500 electric, and the list is growing every day. If you're new here, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. It'd mean a lot to us and help others find our channel. Not gonna belabor the point, you need to take out the front tub, uh, remove the trim pieces so you can get the two screws here right up front, and then all the rest of the 10 millimeter screws are right in the tub itself. So just pull out uh, the trim, pull out the gasket, um, and then just start undoing all the 10 millimeters. Okay, next we need to disconnect the uh, 12 volt. So first I'm gonna disconnect the fireman's loop here. There we go. Maybe put that aside right there. And then swing over here. Okay, we're gonna disconnect this battery here. Pop up the green tab. And then I think I slide this forward, yep. And there it goes. All right, so that's been disconnected. So now I'm gonna take out these struts. We need to do these one at a time. When putting in the new struts, they're ambidextrous or universal, whatever the proper term is, which means we can switch. We can put them on either side. I would just you know, make sure that the cord is facing down on this. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, remember one at a time so that the, uh, this doesn't come crashing down. These clips, they tend to come flying off and get lost, so I'm trying to be careful not to lose a clip here. There we go. Okay, even with just one strut, it's still holding up. There we go, so that one's out. All right, now if we get in here with a 13 millimeter socket, we should be able to undo the current bulb and we're gonna replace it with the new one. All right, and let's put in a new bracket here. This one says right, which means passenger side, or right if you're at the rear of the car facing the front. So let's get this sucker screwed in here. That one's out. There we go, okay. And then pop on our, nice, great, now let's do the other side. Okay, with the experience from doing one side, let's see how easy it is to do the other side. So I'm gonna get in here, pry that out just a little bit. And the hood is currently resting on my head. Do the bottom, pry it out a little bit, comes right off. And then for the new one, pop on the top first. Great. Okay, and since I took the uh, struts out already, let's talk about some of these parts here. So this is the main control box that uh, you know does all of the software and programming and also has a built-in speaker that beeps. So that's kind of the brains of the whole operation. This is a ton of wires to wire it all up. And then this is the actuator motor that pulls closed the spring-loaded latch and gives the frunk lid the appearance of a soft close contact. In addition, when opening the frunk, this cable has to give out some slack and release its tension on the latch. This is in addition to the latch locking mechanism releasing. So let's say the 12 volt power goes dead and one needs to get in the frunk. One would need to not only manipulate the frunk latch release, but also one would need to pull on the emergency loop to allow this hand show actuator to give out some slack and fully release the front latch. Okay, now we're gonna focus on the front latch right here. I'm gonna come in upside down, so now we're looking at it as if we're leaning over the hood. Anyways, so uh, we're gonna take these two bolts out here, they're 10 millimeters. Okay, quick onesie twosie. Now that we've got this unscrewed, we're gonna place the hand show plate over this latch. So let me first take out this piece here, see if we can't get it, there we go, and then 
this piece here lining it up just it just can be a little confusing so if i remember correctly there we go that that way okay so we're going to stack them on top of each other just like that and then this piece has to go up to there and so the first thing we're going to have to do is disconnect this uh, spring here so we can get this on underneath so let's do that now all right and check it these little fins here they break quite often it's surprising how often they break so uh I don't know what to say, man. Some bad test of quality, but I've had to replace a fair number. Okay, so we got the spring, whoops, off there. Then I'm gonna st stack this here. So I can remember, oh yeah, it goes behind. And this piece goes in front. It clips on right there. Okay, and you can see when I took off the, um, the spring that this piece got stuck in the closed position, so I've got to get that open again. Let's see if I can remember like what, what to push on to get this to, to release. There we go. Okay, so it's partially released. Come on, please stay on. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so we got it pretty much all the way up now. And which means I can bring this spring back over and around. Okay, great. So this, this piece is now behind the uh, spring. One thing I forgot to do is this cable, like is it tight? Could it be tighter? I, I mean, I guess it could always be tighter. So let's see if we can't loosen up Okay, and it's a 12 millimeter nut. There we go. So I'm just gonna loosen that up some. And then, again, see if we can get it lined up. What do you think? Yeah, it could be a little tighter. Okay, that looks like it's gonna be taut. So I like it. And remember, the new hand show piece goes on the back here like this, and we're gonna screw all of this back up into here. And oh, I forgot to mark where it goes. I forget to do that every time. You'd think after second or third time around, I would have remembered. Gotta mark it. Well, can't all be winners. Okay, so again, where does, where does this go exactly? Let's put it halfway and then, you know, we'll just have to guess and check. We'll, we'll, before we put all the frunk uh, tub back in and all that, we'll test it out a couple times. And probably one of the biggest questions we have is where, where do we route this cable? So I routed it here behind the headlight and uh, did double zip ties, one here, one here, this one is, uh, going to the actuator. This one is for the emergency cable. Okay, so now we've got this emergency release. Uh, it's supposed to go behind this panel right here. So I'm gonna go about undoing this panel and trying to uh, route it down to there. Oh, there we go. Great, and we can see we've got our uh, positive negative in case we ever need to jump start it. Okay, and we've got this provided uh, snake, so let's actually put it to use here. Feed it in. Hopefully it comes out somewhere. There we go. Great, so it came out the top here. And from there, I okay. can... Was able to pull it out and through. Very good. Great. So now I gotta zip tie it. So, okay. Okay. Great. Okay, one thing the hand show does not do well is they don't do well explaining which wires go to what. I mean, on this one, they've got a picture of all the parts. 
and they label the parts with like numbers here and then over here where do those like parts plug into so again they've got like the numbers but then you come over to the cables and the cables don't have those same numbers they've got like just totally different numbers d8 d6 d7 like d3 and they don't match up like the three on here does not match up at all with the three on here so for example part number one is cables d3 and cables d4 so terrible job explaining what goes where so let me break it down for you some of it's obvious some of it's not so the big woof and plug that goes into the uh, central control unit the head unit this thing here um, I think the next big obvious one is this uh, purple one here goes into the actuator motor so it's the big one what is that D5 um, and then these are kind of obvious B plus for battery or 12 volts positive and, and ground is ground so those are obvious okay so let's get into some of the less obvious or actually this one's still obvious I just mentioned uh, D3 and D4 go to the uh, struts so those are obvious so then we're left with three wires and I brought these three wires over here to talk about them so those are D6 D7 D8 so D7 is one of a kind it goes on this new add-on piece that goes on the uh, the latch so that's gonna slide on here uh, I'm not gonna put it on just yet but then behind that is is this plug here and the question is, what goes there? There's two wires, two options. It's either D6 or D8. And how do you figure it out? I just had to look. So let's see. So there's two prongs there. There's three prongs there. Focus. Anyways, three prongs there. And then I had to look in, and I probably can't do this in the camera, but I had to like look down the barrel or, or even, let's look at the old one. So here's, here's the old wires. This one goes to the latch. Is it two or three? Okay, it's three. So that means we're gonna use D8 is my jam. So let me get it all hooked up, make sure it works. Okay, so here we've got, uh, I guess I'll call this a plunger. It pulls open the, uh, the latch here. So if the latch is closed, like I push it down there and then pull on this guy and it opens it back up. So we gotta install a bypass here, D6. Here we go. So this is the original right here, and all we're gonna do is come in and install our two-pronged bypass. And I think you may remember before I, I pointed out that there is a, a three-pronged one that goes uh, into the latch itself. This is the two-pronged one, D6. So this one is gonna go right here, pretty simple, orange-orange. So the old one will go in here. And then with this bypass, the new one will plug in right there. And then I'm uh, going to have to route this wire around. But basically, um, we might have to do a reset here where we, we pull it out and make it click just to get it going. So we'll see. Okay. All right. I'm about to plug in the positive, And either it's going to work or it's not. And if it works, then we'll wrap it up. Whoa! What's up, baby? Awesome! Probably gonna have to adjust some stuff, but I'd say that's sort of working. Okay, well, I say this sucker's finally working. Let's see. Very good looks smooth and then we come over here get frunk all right seems good to me okay this is test one customers got the app he's gonna try it I hear on the app see what happens sorry it's on very very slow
Beautiful. Okay, now we're ready for open. So opens fast, close slow. And then, so are you supposed to be able to close it from the app or only open? Oh, okay, here we go. Beautiful. Okay, two times in a row working. But what happens when we put all the stuff back in? Okay, all the trim's in. Let's give it a try with the trim. See what happens. Looks good. Any doubts? You want to try one more time just for... That looked good. Yeah. That looked really good. Solid. We hope you got something out of this. If so, would you smash that like button for the algorithm? Until next time, this is Austin Evie only.